The hexagram is considered an epitome of nature. That is to say, it's the perfect symbol to represent nature. Revered by many cultures, this notable talisman can be found across the world. Here it is on a tomb in India, and here on a mosque in Kosovo. A hexagram on a Moroccan coin. And of course, it's a well-known important symbol in Judaism, where it's known as the Star of David. It's found in every Freemasonry lodge. Alchemists revere it, and it's also used in ceremonial magic and rituals. This list is not exhaustive. The hexagram is indeed a notable talisman. A hexagram is a six-pointed star made of two overlaid equilateral triangles, which in Egypt were known as sacred deltas. The union of the two equilateral triangles represents the union of male and female, the male pointing upwards and the female down. The two triangles also represent the concept of as above, so below, with consciousness ascending towards the calibalistic godhead through one triangle and descending to the material or mundane through the other. The hexagram can also be used to represent the four classical elements in the form of the elemental triangles of earth, air, fire and water. When broken down into its two constituent triangles, the elements of fire, the upwards triangle, and water, the downwards triangle, become apparent. When laid over each other, the element of earth, the downward triangle of a line, and air, the upward triangle of a line, appear within a hexagram. The planets and the western zodiac can also be overlaid onto a hexagram as shown in this picture and this is particularly used by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn as an entry point into working with planetary energies. So the hexagram or the six pointed star continues throughout many systems to represent the planets and it is that thought that you should hold on to for a moment. The hexagram represents the planets. In the centre of a line drawing hexagram you'll find a hexagon. That's right, in the center of the symbol that represents the planet, there's a hexagon. And this is where it gets interesting. In 1997, NASA launched a probe called Cassini to the gas giant planet Saturn on top of a Titan 4B center rocket. Cassini spent seven years in deep space until eventually it reached the Saturn system in 2004. The Cassini probe then spent a further 13 years orbiting the gas giant studying the system, including its rings and many moons. The many pictures taken by Cassini were nothing short of breathtaking, but for the benefit of this video, there's only one particular feature that really stands out. At the north pole of Saturn is something incredible, one massive hexagon-shaped storm, twice the size of the Earth. This unique six-sided jet stream at Saturn's north pole is known, unsurprisingly, as the hexagon. Modern humans, that's us, first spotted this strange feature in the early 1980s during NASA's Voyager mission. But it's Cassini, which, with its upgraded cameras and modern instruments, that revealed to us the true majesty and utter beauty of this wonder. Saturn's hexagon is about 20,000 miles across and consists of air travelling at 200 miles an hour. Other planets, including Earth, are known to have jet streams, but none of them remotely resemble Saturn's north polar vortex. The process that makes Saturn's high-speed jet stream in the upper atmosphere make defined and regular 120 degree turns seems rather unnatural, but that statement could not be further from the truth. The hexagon is a natural shape that's often found in nature, from snowflakes to planets, you could say, as above, so below. It's likely that this shape is caused by complex harmonics and storm systems raging right through the centre of this gas giant. Attempts have been made in labs to recreate the polar vortex with some success. It's interesting to note that millennia before pictures of Saturn's poles were taken, that mankind associated the hexagram and hexagon symbol with planets. Perhaps this ancient knowledge has to do with sacred geometry and the formation of the hexagon with certain frequencies or circumstances was known as a mathematical fact of nature to ancient man. Other evidence for ancient detailed planetary knowledge are the myths associated to Saturn. The Greek word for Saturn is Kronos, and in Greek mythology, the Titan Kronos was said to have devoured his own children, which is exactly what Saturn does today. It devours its own moons through its ring system. It's also worth noting that the Cassini probe was launched on the back of a Titan rocket, which is either a complete coincidence, synchronicity at play, or intentional on the part of somebody at NASA. Sceptical? All circumstantial or coincidence, you might be thinking? 
Well, there is more, much more, and too much for me to add in this short video. So for one final chunk of notice, let me take you to Saturn's South Pole. At the South Pole, you don't find a hexagon. Instead, you're presented with an elongated circular vortex. The eye of Saturn stares impassably out into space in this amazing picture by the Cassini probe. The eye of the South Pole storm is indeed an eye. You could say it's the all-seeing eye of Saturn. In ancient Egypt, the all-seeing eye was known as the eye of Horus to the Egyptians. And I'll blow your mind now with one final observation. The ancient Egyptians named the planet we call Saturn after their god of light, Horus, who often appeared in the form of a hawk. So the southern vortex on Saturn literally is the eye of Horus. It's possible, however likely, that far back in antiquity, humans had a detailed astronomical knowledge of the planets. And is that really such a stretch of the imagination? We're beginning in recent years to understand that the ancient cultures did indeed have detailed understanding of science, an understanding that was wisely locked up in mystery schools and not taught openly to keep the uh, secret secret and safe from the wider populace and potential enemies. This hidden science, in part, may have been the true magic of the ancients. Finally, in 2017, the Cassini mission ended. NASA deorbited the Cassini probe and crashed it intentionally into Saturn. This was done because Cassini was running out of fuel and NASA wanted to prevent any chance of Saturn's moons becoming contaminated from an uncontrolled uh, probe crash. You see, another finding of the Cassini mission was that Saturn's moons likely harbour life, or at least the building blocks for life. And do you think the human race is ready for that knowledge? In memory of the Cassini probe, I'll leave you with this final image of Saturn. The little blue dot is where you are, where we all are. The little blue dot is planet Earth. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've got a lot of good videos uh, coming in the near future across a broad range of subjects. This has been Bright Word. I'm Stevie W. Thanks for watching.